Welcome to Excite I. I'm Noel Rappin, and this time on Excite I, we're going to talk about writing more readable code. I think many of us have seen style guides for various languages. Uh, some of us may be in, even be on teams that that sort of mandate their use. And but I don't really want to go through a Ruby style guide line by line here. Um, what I kind of want to do is go up a level and talk about what makes style guide principles useful. You know, what are the underlying things here that we can talk about in terms of whether a piece of code is readable or whether a piece of code is not readable. Now, uh, I'm not aware of any empirical studies on this, uh, so this is going to be, you know, half my own experience, uh, half speculation, half other people's experience, and, and who knows what all. Um, but I do know that if there's one thing that programmers like to do, it's argue over where to put the parentheses and the tab uh, and, and the extra uh, indentation. Uh, so have at it. Uh, th these are the things that I do and that I find valuable uh, as I approach my code, not just at, in terms of uh, what it does, but in terms of how it looks and how, that, how the way that it looks makes it easier for me to deal with over time. So the first thing I expect from my code, the first thing that I think really informs code readability is that the code is expressive. And what I mean by that is that it reveals the developer's intent. Primarily, this is done through naming. Um, you want to have names that actually, for variables and methods, that uh, have a strong relationship to uh, what the variable or the method is actually doing. Uh, you want to try to avoid generic names, uh, things like manager, process, call. If you're, if you're naming a class something manager, uh, something process or processor, or, or if, these are, if process is a method name, you might want to think a little bit more deeply about what the class or the method is actually doing and try to, try to give it a more unique name. Um, making names unique actually has a couple of advantages. Not only does it force you to think a little bit about what it's doing, but it's also easier to search for. Um, when you're looking for a specific method in, in, um, in your entire project. Another important piece of that is uh, DA, which of course stands for don't abbreviate. Uh, abbreviations really hurt the readability of code. If you look at two examples here, this is at the top part here. This is actually, of course, the same code. It's a really simple little uh, fake date range service. Actually, it's not fake. It was a real part of a piece of software of a project that I used. Um, and even in this like one line method, to me at least, replacing start date and end date with SD and ED, even though it saves me the infinitesimal, infinitesimal amount of typing, um, the top line, even though it's technically more concise, is just much harder to read. I have to go to that extra step of trying to figure out, that, trying to remember that SD is start date and ED is end date. Um, and that's just one more thing I have to worry about as I read this code. Reading and writing code effectively is very much about reducing cognitive load uh, and, and reducing the number of things you have to think about at one time and abbreviating just adds one more thing that you need to think about. Um, the next thing that's most important in readable reading your code is to be consistent. Um, this is somewhat easy if you're on a project by yourself and a little bit harder if you're on an entire team. Um, but by and large, consistency overrides almost any other guideline other than maybe expressiveness. Uh, if you have consistent rules or consistent guidelines about how stuff lays out, again, that's one less thing you need to think about, both as you're putting the code together and as you're going over a piece of code. Um, by and large, I stop short of really mandating strict style guide adherence in teams um, in favor of kind of letting a team style uh, grow organically. Um, but it is important, there's a value to having everybody have similar uh, similar outlook on what they're writing. It, it makes it easier to understand what everyone's doing. Um, community standards also count. We'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, but part of being consistent is being consistent with community standards. And in Ruby, Ruby has a particular indentation structure in, in, in a couple of particular indentation rules. Um, you know, obviously the two spaces uh, thing in Ruby that is a very, very strong community standard. Um, those kinds of things have a very, where, where, where there is a very strong community preference, adhering to that preference uh, works towards code readability. You also want your code to be logically structured, uh, which is, I mean, I remember the first time, actually the first time I saw this laid out explicitly was in the original Code Complete book. Um, and it, it kind of, it was crystallizing what I was 
kind of already doing and made me think about it in a, in a more structured way, which is that the physical layout of the code matches its logical structure. I'm sure that most of the people seeing this are familiar with the generic version of this. Um, you know, in this case, you know, lines three and five here are subordinate to the if clause, so they're indented. The if clause is subordinate to the method declaration, so it's indented. Uh, you know, we have a block here, and the, the line inside the block is subordinate to that, so that's indented. And and I, don't, I think that this is something that you know most of us do almost without thinking of it, thinking about it at this point. Um, in Ruby, there are a couple cases where uh, practicality and community standards do actually override what would be a strict logical structure. Um, so in the top example here, um, we have a rescue statement in, in other languages that would actually be indented relative to the outer, uh, outer method call. In Ruby, the outer method call is considered to be uh, essentially equivalent to the rescue call, so, so it's, it's, it's actually outdented. Um, and similarly, uh, in Ruby, by community standard, when, when clauses inside a case statement are not indented, typically, even though they would, logically, they would be considered subordinate. Um, these these are cases where I actually think the rescue case is easier to read. I'm a little bit more ambivalent about the when version, um, but I'm willing to conform to what is a pretty strong community standard. Um, I also feel like parentheses are part of the logical structure of a code, and uh, I generally am pretty reluctant to leave parentheses out, um, except in, in cases where, again, Ruby, there are some strong uh, community standards around things that look like commands not having parentheses. Um, but I also think that, that when you have a line of code, especially a compound line of code, um, parentheses are part of the logical, stru logical structure of that code showing how the various piece of, pieces of it group together. Um, this one, the, the, the next piece here, may be a little bit more idiosyncratic to me. Um, I prefer my code as I sort of scan it to be kind of uniformly dense, um, which is a, kind of a, maybe a fancy highfalutin way of saying that I prefer to keep to a fairly narrow 80 columns width. Um, and you know, I've heard the argument that the 80 column thing uh, uh, was, is an artifact of uh, old days and old monitors, and that these days uh, monitors uh, allow you to have you know, more 120 or 140 characters per line, depending, you know, and, and that therefore we should. Um, I actually find the 80 column thing to be more of a readability thing. Um, for I mean, it, it allows me to use a bigger font, which is one thing. Um, but I also, if you look kind of at this sort of schematic here, um, you know, in the top line, the top version here, we have some longer lines. Obviously, this is sort of made up, but on the, t you know, the blue code here has some longer lines and some shorter lines. and in that case, I find the longer lines, the shorter lines, kind of disappear and become sort of hard, hard to find and, and hard to scan. And I find it easier to scan code when it when it has kind of a uniform width, even if that makes it a little bit longer. You know, the, that yellowish uh, block here, each of these obviously indicating a line of code, uh, where there's some more indentation, but maybe a more uniform width. I find that easier to scan, and and that may just be me, but I also find it hard to search for things like end markers and, and stuff like that that's, that's really far right on code. Um, and, and so I, I prefer, again, to, to maybe put a principle behind what is a personal preference, uh, uniform, a, a uniform sort of density. A, a tip here to sort of to make that more readable, a pure typographic tip, really, is to split a line early rather than late. If you look at the three examples here, um, the first example goes slightly over my 80 column ruler and actually in practice I might just leave that alone um, but if I chose not to uh, one example in the middle is I've basically broken it as late as possible um, I've broken it to just have that last uh, parameter on the next line with a continuation indent and extra indent um, actually that becomes harder to read to the the examples that have very small, the lines that have very little amount of code on them tend to get lost. And what I tend to do in practice is to break as early as possible, um, especially if I can break uh, at an open parenthesis, uh, as in the last example here. Um, the lines are a little bit more balanced. You're never going to not see the original line. Um, and it's easier to see the sec it's easier to see and read the second line if it has some weight to it. If you look back over the slides on this, you'll see I've done something similar on these slides. Uh, where often the breaks between lines on the slide uh, 
uh, are earlier than they would strictly speaking need to be in order to keep the lines of a constant, at, at more or less a constant weight because that's easier for you to perceive uh, as, you're read, as you're reading the slides. I also like my code structures to be manageable. Um, this is in some ways less of a problem now than it has been in other languages and other communities that I've been a part of. But if you look at this example here, this has a couple things that are technically maybe good ideas, um, but which become kind of a pain to keep up over time. Uh, the top one obviously has a fancy comment structure. You don't really see a ton of this in Ruby. I think of it as more of like a Java thing. Um, it's a little bit of a pain to keep up with. Um, I think of complicated uh, documentation markup sort of falling in the same category. Uh, it's technically kind of a good idea, but it's hard to maintain and therefore kind of a friction drag. Um, so I tend not to do it. The bottom one, I'm a little bit more ambivalent about. Um, this is lining up the equal, equal signs. Um, you could make a strong case that this is showing off the logical structure of the code a little better. Um, it's, a, it's in some cases hard to maintain, uh, although by now, these days, most editors have macros that will do it for you. Um, I, I, I don't... I don't know, I don't, I don't have strong feelings about it either way, although in practice it's not something that I do. Um, so I hope that was helpful or interesting or something, uh, talking a little bit about code readability readability, and, and uh, the kinds of things that you can do to uh, make your code easier to work with over time, strictly at a typographic uh, and legibility level. Um, if you're interested in more about TableXI, you can find out more information about us at www.tablexi.com or follow on Twitter at, at TableXI. Uh, if you're interested in more things that I do, including my book, Master Space and Time with JavaScript, you can find that at noelrappin.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at noelrapp. This has been XI to I from TableXI, and we'll see you next time. Hope you liked it. Thanks.